welcome to our show of September the 12th, 2013. It is Thursday, the grand old Thursday. Yes, and it's also throwback select Thursday because we're going to be um, showing two great cool guys that um, have not been, you know, been in the news lately. And we wanted to just, um, you know, bring them back up because they are great, great celebrities. And, I will, and also two of my favorites, and we'll bring them up in a few minutes. Anyway, um, not, did y'all know, y'all, I mean, everybody dreams, of course, Lee, and nine things you do not know about dreaming. Well, I, I'm going to give you some of the things you didn't know about dreaming. You can find the rest, actually, um, WebMed. We actually got this info from WebMed, so, um, you know what, and I like dreaming every night. Sometimes I'll have bad dreams, and I'll wake up, and my heart will be beating really fast, like, oh, gosh, what did I just dream about, or am I fixing to have a heart attack? Anyway, um... <laughs> Also, no, um, I'd like to give one fact. Did you know dreaming can help you learn? What? Can dream? I mean, gosh, I dream every day. God, it should be helping me learn. Uh, it says, uh, this is uh, what it says. If you're, if you're studying for a test or trying to learn a new task, you might consider taking a nap or heading um, to bed early, uh, earlier rather than overreading a textbook an hour longer. Here's why. While the brain dreams, it helps you learn and solve problems, say, said researchers. And at Harvard Medical School, in a study that appears in a recent issue of Current Biology, um, researchers report that dreams are the brain's way of processing, integrating, and understanding new information. To improve the quality of your sleep and your brain's ability to learn, avoid noises in the bedroom, such as TV. I love, have a TV on every night in my room. Uh, which may negatively impact the length and quality of dreams. I always have a TV on. I have like three lamps on also in my room when I go to, uh, when, when I go to sleep. And I know my mom's like, you are nice but big baby. And all this, but I mean really, I, and also I have to admit I am scared of the dark. <laughs> I'm scared of the dark. But no, I mean, I like to have some light on when I go to sleep. Not like a big overhead light shining on me, but... You know, like some lamps or a night light or something like that, because I don't like to be in the pitch dark, you know. So, um, another one is, um, you don't have to be asleep to dream. Did, did, did y'all know that you don't actually have to be asleep to dream? I'm like, wow, that's, that's kind of weird. And it says, turns out you can dream at your desk, at work, in the car, even at your kid's soccer game. Uh, wakeful dreaming, not to be confused with daydreaming, is a real and somewhat easy to do, says Dr. Balakili. It just involves tapping into your active imagination. Um, the first step is to think about a recent dream you had, preferable a good one, you know, a good one, a good dream. Find a quiet, contemplative place and bring a dream that you remember back into your waking awareness and let it unfold. Um, he says, and let the dream re-energize. Wakeful dreaming can be used as a relaxation tool. But Dr. Buckley, or uh, at Buckley, correct, says it can also help your mind process a puzzle dreaming. Puzzle dreaming. It creates a more fluid interaction between unconscious parts of the mind and wakeful parts of the mind, he says. So, those are some things that I didn't know about dreaming. You know, I didn't know you could be dreaming uh, when you're awake. <laughs> But, um, anyway, if you'd like to know all of those facts about, uh, you didn't know about dreaming, you can go to WebMed and you can get it all there. Anyway, throwback celeb Thursday, um, I don't, I, you know, I have watched, I mean, this show started coming on when I was a little, little kid, about like three or four years old, and I, and I, I still remember them today, I remember them, I watched them, got DVDs of it. The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, you know, Dylan and Cole Sprouse, they have, Grown up, they have to be uh, young men, and I have to say, they were such little, little kids on this show, and they have grown up to be, like I said, young men, and they will show videos of them of what they look like now, today, when we come back. Don't go away, everyone. We will be right back in a moment. We'll be right back in just a few moments with Dylan and Cole Sprouse for a throwback Celebrity Thursday. Don't go away. Welcome back to our show, everyone. Now we are having a throwback Celebrity Thursday. And you know what? And you see, like, all the pictures on Instagram, like, oh, the throwback Thursday. And, you know, they, like, show, like, 
baby pictures of themselves or something like that. So it's throwback celebrity flowers that I know a chat live. And today we're gonna be having the stars of Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, Dylan and Cole Sprouse, and um, you know some of the uh, some of your uh, the parents' kids. They might have watched that show um, when they were younger. The kids did, and if so, they should let the kids watch this episode so they'll find out. And um, we'll we'll show what they look like now today. And here's Dylan and Cole Sprouse doing a dance a couple of weeks ago. Take a look. <laughs> The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, Dylan and Cole Sprouse. We are um, showing great videos of them because they haven't been, you know, mentioned in the news or lately. <laughs> Dylan Sprouse, um, we have a sweet lady that um, sat down and chatted with him a couple of weeks ago. And we're going to show you some of the interview. Take a look. So, um, what's the most scandalous rumor you've ever heard about yourself? Uh, oh, this is a, I actually know this one off the top of my head. I went on the IMDB forum of my profile <laughs> and like what people were saying and I was like 14 at the time so I was like you know in this awkward puberty stage and I remember looking at the top thread and the thread question was is Dylan Sprouse a hermaphrodite and the guy which was great okay gave me and my friends a huge laugh in the car especially when I read it aloud but like the way that the dude validated it was like okay Long hair like a girl, okay, blown, swept back every episode, um, high-pitched voice, uh, not pronounced Adam's apple, like, bit chubby, could be blues, like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, and so we read it out loud, and it was really funny, um, and I'm glad they never figured out that I am a hermaphrodite, uh, so, to this day, I'm glad they haven't found that out, or at least found the tape, you know who you are. <laughs> So why did you choose to not continue acting? Uh, for several reasons. Um, that's a good question. My brother and I, my brother and I, first off, we needed to stop <laughs> the show. We knew it was time. You um, chose to stop it. Yes, my brother and I actually quit off the Disney Show. Uh, we quit one because, yeah, uh, one because it had been six years, and we thought that the glory days of the show were definitely when we were the, in the younger series. Um, and so we stopped it then, but also for another reason, my brother and I wanted to uh, become producers for the show. So we were trying to um, get the writing credits for a, one more season before we went to college. Because Cole and I actually deferred a year before we came here. Um, and what we wanted to do during that year was film one last season where uh, and we wrote this all ourselves. We, we had everything out and laid out on the table. And we went up to them and we said, well, let's do one, if we're going to do one last season, it's going to be on our terms. Um, we're going to produce it. Um, and it'll be a setup for a new show. The reason we want to do that, too, was because it would also set up all the cast and crew we've worked with for six years. So they would not lose their jobs and our decision to go to college in real life. And so they would continue to work and we would, you know, we would also be making money off the producership. Um, they told us no to that idea. Uh, and uh, so that was that was kind of a big part of the decision because they didn't trust us enough after all this time. And uh, then like a week or two later, they came back to us and they're like, all right, well, you know, we said no to your idea. Let us pitch you our idea that we came up with. And they pitched us our idea in Miami with Selena Gomez. And Cole and I turned to each other and we basically laughed in their face and walked out. And that was the last meeting we had with Disney. We were just like, no, that was the end. Um, and this was after the movie. And so after that, we decided, you know, the best way to, to leave acting, let's get back to the question, was because historically Disney Channel stars don't survive well outside of the Disney environment after they've acted so long in it like we had, we decided that we should go and get a higher education for one reason, which was to get a higher education, because we really value our education. But two, because it would give time for people to forget about us. They would see us, they've seen us for so many years. So if we left now and returned four years later, after we've grown, gained an education, uh, looked 
physically different, come back, you know, we leave as kind of young men, come back as men, it would only do good for us. And so that was our last doubt. We walked out after that. Would you ever date Taylor Swift? You know, I am of the demographic that does not think she is that cute. But even if, like, she would write a song about you? If she, write she would her. write a song about me, and oh, I'd be yeah. like, thanks. And I'd be like, that'd be, if she wrote a song about my mustache, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Okay, all right. Because maybe it would be, like, just enough good juju to make it grow a little bit more. <laughs> like, if enough people gave their, like, faith to my mustache, they were like, oh, you know, T-Swift is right. Dylan's mustache. And they just, like, rooted it on. <laughs> it could potentially grow. And I'd be like, okay, I'll date you. <laughs> we'll go on one date. Welcome back, Garsha, everyone. Now we have the most sweetest, cutest, little, adorable kids ballroom dancing. We got some great professional ballroom da Oh, they, they dance like professionals. And we have them here right now. Take it away, you guys. <laughs> having a show all to fight for for her special birthday have a great day 